Welcome to the channel. I started out on this channel using Windows Machine that also ran my Home Assistant instance. Later as my requirements increased, I moved across to Apple Silicon for my video production setup and a small form factor PC for my Home Assistant. However, I have always wanted to move all my devices over to Apple ecosystem for security, reliability and longevity based on Apple Silicon. And now I can do that. And even better, it's all based on free software. Check out the video for installing Home Assistant into a virtual machine running on Windows if fruit machines are not to your taste. In this video, I'll be taking you through the difference between using VirtualBox that we use for the Windows machine installation and UTM and showing you the pros and cons. Then we'll show you the installation of UTM and how to install a Home Assistant instance all running on Apple Silicon and we'll have you up and running in less than 10 minutes. Plus, we'll highlight some of the pitfalls that might stop you successfully installing. I know at least one of these stumped me for a while. So let's take a bite of the apple and get Home Assistant installed. Now skip this section if you don't want to know the pros and cons between UTM and VirtualBox and just want to get on with the installation. Firstly, UTM is a virtualization platform specifically developed to run different operating systems and was built specifically for Mac OS. Unlike VirtualBox, which is a generic open platform virtualization that runs on many different host operating systems. As such, UTM is optimized for Apple Silicon as opposed to VirtualBox, where support was only added in version 7.1. So it's still fresh and not fully proven technology. UTM supports the native Apple hypervisor framework. As such, it offers huge performance advantages, offering near native performance, whereas VirtualBox provides an emulation layer and as such may suffer performance degradation, especially as Apple Silicon is still in the early days of support. But it's not all one-sided, as VirtualBox does offer a rich feature set, including snapshots and shared folders plus more. And finally, as far as cost is concerned, both are free when downloaded from their respective websites. Just remember to not download the UTM through the Apple App Store, as it costs $9.99 US and $14 Australian for some reason. Okay, let's see how quickly we can get Home Assistant running on Apple Silicon, specifically an M4 Mac Mini using UTM. Start the clock. Navigate to the UTM website, link in the pop-up above. Press download. Remember, it's free here and downloading from the Apple App Store costs you money. If prompted to allow to use downloads, press allow. The download is 245 megabytes, so it should be quite quick. Select the download icon in the top right hand corner and double click on the utm.dmg file. Copy the utm to the application folder. Press command and space. Enter utm. The application will show up and select if prompted about the app being downloaded from the internet, press open. We are now ready to install the virtual machine, but we still need the Home Assistant image to install from. Normally, I would send you to the Home Assistant installation page where you can download images from. However, in this case, we need a specific version that's available from the Home Assistant GitHub website. Link in the description and in the pop-up above. Scroll down and select releases in the right-hand column. Now scroll down to Assets. Select the AArch64 file for QCow. In this case, the latest version is 15.2. If prompted to allow to use the download file, press Allow. Open Finder and navigate to your Downloads directory. Right click on the HAOS file that has been downloaded and select Open with Archive Utility. This will expand the file. Now move back to UTM. Press Create a new virtual machine. Select Virtualization. Select Other. For boot device, press None and press Continue. For memory, set this to 2048 megabytes for a standard installation or 4096 megabytes if you have a very large installation. Remember, this is reserved from your available system memory, so be careful and never exceed 50% of the available memory. Set CPUs at two cores, as this will service 90% of Home Assistant installations. Now press continue. Leave the default storage as this will be deleted in the installation process. Press continue. We'll not do any sharing of any paths at this stage, but you can do this later on if required. 
Press continue. Give your virtual machine an appropriate name and tick the open VM settings as we'll need to make a few changes before starting. Now press save. The virtual machine settings will now open. Select system in the left hand menu. Verify that the ARM64 with ARCH64 is selected from the architecture. Select QEMU in the left hand menu. Make sure that the UFI boot is selected. Select input from the left hand menu. Make sure that the share USB devices from host is ticked if you intend to connect a USB Zigbee coordinator. Select display from the left hand menu. Use the drop down for the emulated display card and set to Vertio GPU PCI. Select network from the left hand menu. Use the drop down to make sure that the network mode is set to bridged advanced. Also that the emulated network card is set to Vertio Net PCI. Now this is important as it stumped me for a while. If I left the bridged interface as automatic, then the Home Assistant instance would seem to install, but I could not see any IP address in the CLI installation screen, and hence was not accessible. This was resolved by using the drop down and setting the bridged interface to EN1. If you see any other values here, you might need to adjust accordingly, but this worked for me. If you know why this is, then please let us know in the comments as I would have expected automatic to work perfectly out of the box. Now press vert IO drive in the left hand menu and press delete and confirm with delete. Once deleted, do not press delete again as this will crash UMT. Now press new in the left hand menu and select import. Navigate to your downloads image that you have extracted. Select and press open. Make sure that you do not select the .xz compressed file. Now you can press save. If required, right click the virtual machine and press edit. This will bring up the settings screen that you can verify your settings have been saved successfully. But if you are happy with your settings, then press the play button in the center of the screen. Now, if you want to use a USB Zigbee coordinator, press the USB icon in the top right hand corner of the window. This will bring up a list of all USB connected devices. Select your connected USB Zigbee coordinator in my case, an SM Lite ZL SB07, link in the description. If prompted, press allow, and it will now appear in Home Assistant ready for configuration. Now use the IPv4 address that is displayed on the screen to navigate to Home Assistant. Open a new browser tab and enter the IP address and press enter. I'll set up a new installation, but you might be restoring a previous installation. Press create my smart home. Enter a name, a username, a password, and press create account. Enter a home location and press next. Optionally send analytics to Home Assistant and press next. Home Assistant will search for compatible devices on your network. Press finish and you're done. Home Assistant is running on Apple Silicon and all in under 10 minutes. Now this was an installation of Home Assistant onto Apple Silicon in under 10 minutes. But if you want to install onto Windows environment or a Synology NAS, then check out the links in the description. I'll also be adding a super quick installation of Home Assistant onto a Raspberry Pi 5 very shortly, which statistically is still the most popular installation of Home Assistant. Check out those stats in the link below. And as a bonus, how to install using VMware Fusion for free onto Apple Silicon, which gives you even more functionality with little to no overhead. So make sure you subscribe to see those videos. Well, I hope you enjoyed the video. And if you did, then hit that like button, comment and share. And if you want to have access to similar material, then subscribe or maybe become a channel member and get early access to material plus other perks. And if you want to join other like-minded people, then why not join the Discord channel where smart home enthusiasts meet to solve each other's issues. And if I've helped you get Home Assistant running on your Apple Silicon, then maybe a super thanks or a PayPal donation. It's really appreciated. Until the next one.